Hey everybody, it's Nathaniel Avila <laughs> reporting from Greater Orlando and I'm here talking to uh, Tumbro Hildebrand uh, reporting from Crowley, uh, Texas and today we're going to be talking about uh, Ray, uh, not Ray, uh, Escape to Witch Mountain Ooh. So uh, what did you think about this uh, nice film? Yeah, I mean, it was it was filmed, it was made during, like, this very interesting time in Disney history, which was, a lot of people refer to it as the Dark Age, um, because it was, like, it was, like, a couple years after Disney, uh, the guy passed away from lung cancer, and now Disney was trying to figure out what to do without their, uh, with, without their head guy, so uh, at the time they were just mostly focusing on uh live action films rather than animated films uh so they this is one of the one of the products that came out of it uh so uh there really isn't much background to this film other than that it was based off of a novel that was made in 1968 uh so uh, but what i can say was like the differences between the film and the novel uh so like there's a lot of there's quite a few differences between its tone and its plot elements like uh how uh oday or jason oday was actually supposed to be like an athletic young priest rather than just some guy yeah so um and also the children are supposed to be olive skinned uh even though they are uh light colored they have a light color hair or rather than uh being white. So, uh yeah, that was that was a significant change. Um and also in the novel, uh Duranian, who was the main antagonist, was actually working for like a shadowy European cabal ooh, who was trying to capture the children for their special powers instead of just one other guy, which was Bolt. Yikes. Yeah. And then the novel was set was supposed to be at the Atlantic coast instead of the Pacific coast, um, and that was pretty much the entire. That's pretty much the differences between the book and the and the film. Uh, do you, Do you think uh, that the changes were were good in the film? I mean, I've never read the book, so I guess it's it's not really. I, I can't really say though. It does sound like it would have been a little bit more interesting to see a young athletic priest than just an old guy in a. In a trailer, that does sound a little bit more interesting, in my opinion. But I, I, yeah, I think so too. I don't know. I think it was because I, it might have been Disney just trying to Disneyfy it. We're like, well, we can't have religion in our movies. That's too. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, but um, yeah, like, so w what do you think about like the structure of this film? Um, I mean, it it definitely it definitely feels like it fits the time period. Like mm -hmm. it. It kind of, uh, this came out in what, the, the 70s, right? Yeah, 1975. Yeah, it, it feels very much like it was from that time period, kind of that in-between stage of the 60s and the 80s, because those two decade movies are very, very different, and the 70s was kind of this weird, kind of this weird time period, at least in my opinion. I haven't seen a lot of 70s movies, but this definitely feels like kind of your run-of-the-mill kid magic adventure kind of romp and slap Disney on there and with the peppy music and um, cute kids, you know, it, it definitely just, it feels like a Disney movie. Yeah. Like, did you like the relationship between Tia and Tony? I actually thought that was really sweet. I, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Like, what is your, what are your favorite uh, scenes with the two? Um, I don't know. I really liked it how at the beginning Tony kept on defending Tia's honor and uh, I thought that was sweet. Like he's a real good big brother. He's always looking out for her. So I thought I thought it was cool at the beginning when they were at like the foster home or whatever, and he was looking out for her when the bully was kind of you know m messing around, with, uh, you know, g giving him a hard time. Yeah, like his name is Truck too. He was. <laughs> yeah, it's an unfortunate name. Yeah, it is. A That's probably why he's a bully because he was named Truck. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I bet like his dad was like after he was born, he just like like looked at the first thing he saw and was like, ah, name him Truck. That's your name <laughs> now. <laughs> oh yeah. And now go to the orphanage because you're an orphan now. And so, oh. 
<laughs> so yeah, like, did you find it really interesting where like they were like sh- they they were like showing off their powers and everything? Um, I thought it was neat. It was really cool to see kind of like the practical effects used during that age to achieve like the telekinetic stuff. What I thought was really impressive was the scene where uh, Tony was like drawing on the mirror with a with a piece of crayon. I think that was the most realistic. Um, effect they did, and I thought it was really cool to watch that. It was really neat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was pretty cool. And also, there was this one scene where we meet Winky the cat, uh, and they did this thing where they tried to simulate the cat winking, which it was obviously this them reversing the image over and over oh, again. Oh, I didn't. Even, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. It did, did look weird, but I, I didn't notice what it was. Did you uh, Did you like the character of the cat? Oh, the cat was fine. I mean, like, he didn't seem like a huge character, but, yeah, yeah he was nice. Which is kind of funny, because he was actually, he, the cat was actually a huge pain on set. <laughs> typical, that doesn't surprise me. Typical cat, am I right? <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's typical for, uh, you know, animals, trying to work with animals on. Yeah. Oh, speaking of, speaking set. of animals, like, you should see the, the, uh, what was going on with the bear that was used oh my word that made me like uncomfortable that bear was just with him with the kids that <laughs> freaked me out well this this story will freak you out even more is because uh the actress who played tia uh she actually started she actually really uh liked the bear uh and she wanted to uh wash it wash the bear his name was bruno by the way she wanted to watch bruno um and while she was watching him, the bear uh, ended up picking her up and just shook her uh, like a bunch. Just oh like shook word. her all over. And then the handler finally had to come in and like get a, get the bear to let her go. And that really terrified her. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, but she had to, she said, but according to the story, like she played it up for the audience. That was, that was not like that, the crowd that was gathered. Uh, oh, yeah. But... It was, she said it was, like, very scary. Yeah, I would think, like, it was making me really uncomfortable, like, seeing those kids. Because at first I thought, okay, well, they're just using kind of that, like, photo mapping kind of thing where they'll show them in the background and then cut away and stuff like that. But, no, those those kids were, were with the bear, and that really weirds me. Uh, that, oh, that freaks me out. Yeah. Um, what's it? Oh, Kim Richards is the actress's name. Uh, oh, oh, okay. You should see her now. She's very beautiful. I know. Both her and uh, the kid who played Tony, they appeared with small cameos in the newer, um, the newer, the, what was it, Escape to Witch Mountain, or Race to Witch Mountain, Race, yeah. the one that came out with The Rock yeah. in the 2010s. Yeah, um, Tony was the sheriff, and Tia was the waitress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's fun. Yeah. And also, what about like that scene where the bear ended up in the in the car, and everyone was like, "Wow, that's wacky!" Uh, oh, that was, that was funny. I thought that was humorous. Yeah. So, what did we like about like the main villains, which is like Bolt and Duranian? Oh, I thought they were interesting enough. I I think the I can't remember which one was which. The the uncle dude, who, the guy who was pretending to be their uncle, I, I felt like he was fairly compelling. He was a Bond villain at one point, Ooh. so I felt like I, I felt like he was the better actor, so I found him a bit more compelling, but um, but I'll be honest, the, the, the villains weren't super compelling. I really do think this movie is more about spectacle than uh-huh. necessarily the strongest of plots. Like, it's about showing off the special effects and having, you know, cute little uh, scenes with the kids dancing with puppets and stuff, you know, so, uh, it, it's a little different, I'd say, uh, I, I'm just, that, that being said, like, uh, I don't think the villains are particularly compelling because the focus seems to be more on, you know, making the movie fun. Right, and also, like, that one scene where they turned the helicopter upside down, uh, was it, <laughs> yeah. was it that wacky? Even though I don't think a helicopter would do that, I don't think you could fly a helicopter upside down. Yeah, that that's not possible. Yeah, but it, it's possible in a Disney movie. You just have to believe, <laughs> and believe I do. So, um, like, uh, so, uh, what do we think about like the character of O'Day, like Jason O'Day? Um, he was nice. I would have 
like to see more of him. I kind of expected to see him in more of the movie, and we didn't really get to see him till like the second half, mm-hmm. or even like like the 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 last third of the movie. Right. So um, so yeah, I did feel like uh, it would have been. I guess it would have been nicer to have him show up earlier because then he would have had more of a connection through the kids, uh, with the kids. So that did kind of rush their relationship, so it didn't feel quite as, uh, I guess, quite as compelling as it could have been. So I, I definitely think they should have brought him in earlier. Yeah, exactly. Because I had that same feeling too about um, how he came in. It was like, wow, well, who who is this guy? And then he became like this very prominent figure with the rest of the the rest of the film. And then at the end, he was like. Uh, I wish you were my kids. And I'm yeah. like, uh, that's kind of a weird thing for you to say. I mean, you just met him, like, a day ago. <laughs> well, yeah. And then, I mean, like, any other... Uh, I mean, if you just told someone a basic rundown of this movie, two kids and an old guy traveling around in a camper, you'd probably get a very different idea of what this is about. Yeah, I, I'm going to put that on Twitter, hashtag uh, explain, a movie, explain movie plot badly, or something like that. <laughs> Am I right? No kidding. Yeah, so, like, definitely this guy, O'Day, is definitely supposed to be, like, this uh, crotchety old guy. He was supposed to be, like, like the um, like the John Wayne in, in True Grit, or the the Logan in Logan. Yeah. <laughs> who, who's supposed to, like, uh, take care of the children and take them to wherever they need to be. So, uh, how did you think, like, the relationship between the two were able to, like, be portrayed in the limited amount of time that they had well with the limited amount of time that they had like i felt like it worked like like you know, since they only had so much time i think they got us liking jason relatively quickly because you know he's he's old and cranky but he's also endearing you know and he, he clearly cares about the kids and stuff so you know they got us to like him fairly quickly and they threw in you know kind of that sad story about uh you know his wife passing away yeah and whatnot so like it was nice but again since she was thrown in later um since since i mean i'm sorry since he was thrown in later in the movie it it still felt a little rushed right so that yeah so i think it 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 wasn't terrible but it it could have been it could have been better i think yeah i mean this film was only an hour and a half long um, they could have added, like, maybe another half hour just to focus on their relationship. Um, would you think that would have, uh, worked? Um, I'm sorry, what was that? Like, they, this film was only gonna get, like, an hour and a half long, so would you think they would have dedicated another hour and a, like, another half hour to, to that particular plot point? It would have been, like, stronger? Oh, yeah, I think that definitely would have helped. Yeah. So, um, also, there was also, like, speaking of animals, there was also that one scene with the dogs where they were, like, running after them. Yeah. Am I right? So, like, it also was supposed to be corresponding with the uh, opening sequence with these, like, cartoon dogs, like, chasing after the kids. Um, yeah. So, what did we think about that that scene? Um, where the dogs were chasing them? Yeah. Um, I mean... It, I, I guess for me it felt a little underwhelming because they built it up so much in the opening sequence. I was expecting them to be a little bit more of a. I guess I was expecting them to be a little bit more of a threat, mm-hmm. and then, um, then you know they just kind of like, oh, she can communicate with the dogs, and it's fine. They'll just leave them alone. <laughs> so, yeah. They will just attack the 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 bad guys, and then all is go- well. Yeah, it, yeah, I guess that was just a little disappointing to yeah. me. Well, that was, like, another thing, like, did you, like, the, uh, like, the girl's power was that she can talk to animals, I think, right? Yeah. And then her other power is, uh, like, future seeing? Is that right? It, it wasn't very clear, I mean, I think it was clear, like, both of them were telekinetic, but... The boy had to use the harmonica to use his telekinesis, and also he could jump pretty high. Or was he jumping, or maybe using telekinesis? I don't know. Uh, like he had maybe one power, and she had like five. Yeah. So <laughs> I think what I, don't know. I think what he was doing, he was like doing like chronicle style and levitating himself to fly a little bit. I guess. Yeah, it was something like that. 
And then there was also like some scenes where he didn't use the tele- where you didn't use the harmonica, like when he used like the baseball bat to like <laughs> block the bully's punch. I wasn't sure if that was him or her. Oh, snap. It seems unclear to me, but I honestly I, I don't know. Yeah. So again, it didn't feel super. They didn't super explain it. Yeah, but uh, maybe we have to watch one of the sequels to understand. I guess. Yeah, and so like also. Uh, they're aliens. Whoa! What did you think about that plot twist? Well, it wasn't a super twist to me because I had already seen um, the newer version with uh, the rock and stuff. Yeah. And they kind of like it's not a surprise in that one. They just kind of put it up front that hey, they're aliens and they're from another planet and they have superpowers. Like they don't make you wait as long to find that out. Mm-hmm. But I think that if I had watched it not knowing that, it might have been. I don't know. I guess I probably would have thought the twist a little bit ridiculous. Like, oh, they have superpowers. Oh, and now aliens are involved. But at the same time, since they spend so much of the movie building up to, like, where these kids are from, I think I think it works. That, right. you know, it's not quite what everyone expected. Yeah. Like, a, a good chunk of the film is them trying to solve the mystery of where they're from. And, uh, and also uh, dealing with, like, oh, no, their spaceship crashed or something. Um, and then when they went back onto the, like, the, uh, the, their, like, spaceship, they, like, fly away, or they, they go into the lake or something, uh, like, the, the, the two bad guys, Dorinian and Bolt, watch them, and then they're like, uh, whatever, they're aliens, they're, we can't do anything about it, so we'll just leave. So they gave up pretty (laughs) easily. Yeah, they they gave up pretty quick, didn't they? (laughs) Yeah, they did. It was like, oh, well, oh, they're aliens, well, we can't do anything now. (laughs) <laughs> we're done pack home uh pack everything up we're going home so um yeah like because of this i think i know that there's they said that um there are more uh alien children out there um and they made uh disney made two sequels one called return to Re- uh, return to witch mountain and uh beyond witch mountain oh uh, really i didn't realize there were two more yeah so I'm guessing it has to do with the other alien children. Um, that's the only thing I can think about. I don't know. I never really looked into it. Uh, but, I mean, yeah. So, like, uh, how do you think this film compares to the more recent film? The more recent, like, Race to Witch Mountain? Um, I mean, I'd say it's definitely... They're indicative of the time periods that they were created. And, mm-hmm. like, it, it, both of them fit when they came out like this definitely feels like a kid movie a a kid adventure movie from the 70s Mm -hmm. and the race to witch mountain feels like a kid movie from the you know late 2000s Mm -hmm. so i mean i don't know if it's like personally i enjoyed the newer one more just because i felt like the story was a little bit more um fleshed out i suppose like the relationship between the characters were fleshed out a little bit more i'm not trying to say it's citizen kane or anything but i i enjoy it just because it it might be a little bit formulaic but it's still enjoyable because it it hits all the right marks i feel like in uh escape to witch mountain uh it's relying a lot on spectacle and so we miss a little bit of the like i don't feel like the character development is quite as deep Right. But at the same time, again, it's indicative of the time period and the audience that it was looking for, was aimed at. So I think it hits that on all cylinders. Right. And I know in, in Race to Witch Mountain, it's a lot more uh, action-packed than, than this particular film. Yeah. And um, we at in this uh, film, we know that, it's, uh, that they're aliens. And it's not like this mystery box type thing where we're like, oh, what, where'd they come from? Like we already know that they're aliens, and they we they have like a a, a logical uh, motivation. They want to go from one point to uh, point B, which was which mountain. Um, mm-hmm. And that brings me to another point. Like, do we ever see which mountain in this film? Yeah, that that name seems pretty throwaway because, like, just at one point when all the rednecks are about to go after them, they're like, they're probably heading for which mountain, and that's like, but. That's all we hear about it. Like, <laughs> why do they call it Witch Mountain? Do you have more witches in the area or something? Yeah. You like, know, I, yeah. that did seem kind of throwaway. At least in the newer movie, they, like, they referred to Witch Mountain several times. It's like, oh, it's a 
military facility. It's called Witch Mountain, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But Tyrion's kind of just like, oh, they must be witches, so they're probably heading to Witch Mountain. You know, <laughs> it's, I don't know. They must be escaping to Witch Mountain, and then they look into the camera, and they're like, da-da-da. <laughs> <laughs> and then the title, and then smash cut to the title. <laughs> near the end. Um... So yeah, and there was this other character, um, Hiram, I believe is his name, who was uh, O'Day's brother, who they mentioned a lot, but I guess they didn't have money to cast him, so because we didn't see him, we never saw him. Yeah, we never met the brother. Never met the brother. What's what's up with that? I honestly, I don't know. Again, like I don't think this is the most rock hard of plots. You know, so I guess you just kind of have to, like, take it as it is. Yeah. I do think that the brother part was a little unnecessary. I mean, the guy could have just had a house up in that area. Yeah. You know? I think I so, know. too. Yeah. And also, there was this other, sometimes, some kind of, uh, where they mentioned the, his wife a little bit. Uh, I wish we kind of would have heard more about that. Yeah, yeah, that, that that also seemed a little bit underdeveloped. Yeah, instead of, like, just mentioning it once, and then he's, like, sad, and then, then we never mention it again. Um, and then also, like, he, like, pretends that he was never married in the first place. Uh, we yeah. probably could have, like, talked about why he was pretending to not be married, as opposed to just saying he was married or not, uh, or being a widower or something. I don't know. Uh, it, it It's all... Uh, up in the air. I mean, the care. I, I could. Well, you're probably right because it's definitely mo. Like they're mo. Like they're mostly. The filmmakers were probably mostly into like the special effects or like the practical effects rather than like the characters. Uh, uh -huh. So, I can understand probably where they're why they probably didn't do too much into it. But uh, I don't know. I kind of wish they did. Yeah. Like I kind of wish they kept with the with the priest thing. I think that would have been a lot inter more interesting. Yeah, that would have been neat. I would have I would have liked to see what that would have looked like. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, so yeah, like, oh, what what else is there to what else is there to say? Oh yeah, the uh the the lady, what's her face? Uh, the orphanage lady. What about her? Oh uh, yes. Do we like her? I mean. She wasn't in very much of the movie, but the couple minutes I saw her, I didn't, I didn't mind. Yeah, I mean, and she was, she, she was like, sure, go and here's your uncle, go to him. <laughs> there's your, there's your uncle, um, and it also kind of like breaks to differ. Like, what if uh, Tia would have just let Duranian die in, in the, in the car crash? That definitely yeah. would have like spared a lot. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, but then again, we wouldn't have a movie. We need, we need, we need a movie. So exactly. Um, and then, so do they ever explain why Holt wanted their powers so much? I mean, I guess they kind of hinted at it when they were like at the dining room table with him when he was talking about how they could tell him where the oil was or if a war was about to happen or if a natural disaster was about to happen. You know, he was clearly planning on exploiting them for financial gain mm -hmm. um and also do 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 they have like mind control powers a bit because in that same scene they're like you need to go to sleep and then he's like i need to go to sleep and then he just I walks don't up know. honestly i i don't know it was a little un again it was unclear yeah they were they were jedi mind tricking them and <laughs> And then they turn to Dorini and is like, you need to go to sleep too. And he's like, I need to go to sleep too. And then they both leave. Um, so, yeah, that that's Escape to Witch Mountain. Like, Escape uh, to Witch, yeah. So, like, also, like, there's also that one character. What was that? What was his name? Who was the other alien? Who was, like, their uncle? Uncle Dene or something like that? Uncle, oh, wait, what? There was, oh, Uncle Bene. Uh, oh yes. Who is the who is the guy who just comes out and he's like, "Hey, I'm exposition man. We're aliens." Um, so he kind of comes in like a Deus Ex Machina and and just rescues the kids and they go into the lake and then that that's that that's the end of the movie. Um, so what did we think about like the ending of the film? Again, I I would just say that it definitely fits what 
the movie feels like. You know, it's just it's a kids' movie, so they tie everything up at the end with a nice little bow, and we're done. Yeah. So that's about it. Also, they make a big deal of this language that they never speak. Um, not even Bene when he comes out, he doesn't speak any different language. He just speaks English. So no, they decided to settle down in Longview, Texas, and just speak English. I, I guess. I guess they decided to do that. <laughs> and then he's like, and also like, why, why? Oh, I don't know. Like he, he pretended that he didn't pretend that, but they he let them believe that he was dead. Um, and then he just just waits for them to to come get find him why can't he just go and find them I know that's kind of what I'm thinking I'm like okay so all these kids are just wandering around the earth with these superpowers and you're just kind of chilling here yeah not trying to find them yeah they're like oh they have that lunchbox with the map on it they'll figure it out <laughs> <laughs> as long as like they drop it and then it'll finally reveal the map <laughs> because it just they they found out the map out of like just some pomp and circumstance uh because truck like stole it from them and then the cat knocked it out of his hands and it broke open and then and then they found the map because if that didn't happen uh they wouldn't have been able to know where they're going and that's that's how that but we need a movie so yep that was pretty much it yep so like this film is very it's very linear I can I can tell like it's it's very linear like okay like the kids need to do this thing and they need to go here um, and that's that and they get there pretty pretty easily um, without like these uh, you know people who wanna who wanna ca- kidnap them but they kind of escape them pretty easily so do you feel like there's like not that much like like the stakes aren't very high um yeah I won't say the stakes. The stakes never felt super high to me, and that's another thing that I think the newer movie does a little bit better, is that the stakes feel a lot more high because the kids aren't always successful necessarily. Like, there's a point of tension where they get separated from their protectors, and there's some real, like, there's some there's there's something real on the line. And in this movie, and again, it's marketed towards kids, so it's not going to be super, I guess, intense. But yeah, I, I definitely didn't feel much of a... Like, you know, he was chasing them and all that, but it didn't really feel imminent, I suppose. Yeah, like, when I was watching it, I definitely knew that the kids were definitely very overpowered. So whenever anything would bad would happen, they would be like, ah, we'll use our powers and we'll get out of it. And that's pretty much what happened. Um, and also, uh, wasn't there, like, a scene where... Uh, Tony loses his harmonica or something. Yeah. And did he get it back pretty easily? I don't remember. I don't remember how yeah, he got it back. Yeah, just kind of like snapped it back with telekinesis. Oh, well, I'm glad that was solved. <laughs> so, yeah, that's Escape to Witch Mountain. Uh, any final thoughts about it? Um, I mean, it, it's an okay movie. I didn't super enjoy it. I thought it, I thought the kids were really cute. I'd, I'd watch it again for the kids because the kids were fun, but it it definitely wasn't my super favorite. <laughs> okay. Would you watch any of the sequels? Eh, probably not. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, Escape to Witch Mountain. What what rating would you give it? Uh, I'd give it like a maybe a 6 out of 10. Okay. I would give it a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Because it was pretty nice, all things considered. Oh, well, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it was definitely a pretty nice feel-good movie where the good guys win. And the bad guys just give up, and they just go home. They didn't. They didn't. Yep. They didn't get any justice or anything. They weren't brought to justice. They were just like, "Oh, we're done. We're going home." Uh, so yeah, that's that's Escape to Witch Mountain, uh, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>